This is Jane Lowe at the uh, Quantum Summit here at the uh, Singapore Expo. And with me today, I'm very privileged and very pleased to have Professor P Paul Griffin, who is from the Singapore Management University, mm -hmm. SMU in short, yep. uh, joining us. And uh, he's going to be sharing with us on quantum and blockchain, two very exciting topics on its own, but uh, together it's going to be even more exciting. So <laughs> thank you, Paul, for joining us today. Okay, thank you for inviting me. Very yeah. To do it. So, Professor, uh, you... You have done a lot of work in quantum, mm -hmm. and as well as a lot of work in blockchain, mm -hmm. right? And so, when for a lot of the audience, uh, there's two very separate technologies. Mm -hmm. One works in the classical world, and the other, obviously, is the emerging mm -hmm. world of qubits, yep. right? Yep. So, you are talking about uh, binary bits mm -hmm. and qubits coming together. So, what's mm -hmm. the synergy there? Okay, well, if we look at uh, blockchain from its, uh, from its own perspective, then... Uh, there's various areas of improvement for blockchain. So in the security side, then you've maybe you've heard of the blockchain trilemma, mm -hmm. where it's impossible to actually increase the security and the size of your network of decentralized nodes and the speed all at the same time. You have to sort of trade off between one or the other. So the first thing I kind of looked at when I, when I got back into the kind of quantum technologies was, can quantum break that trilemma? Can we do something to improve blockchains when quantum technologies are good enough. We've got quantum networks, we have quantum computing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did a few experiments and I've got some very, very interesting uh, research done that proves that I think we can, we can improve the security because we have quantum networks. Quantum networks are very secure channels where you're exchanging these qubits with each you're other. You're talking about the QKD, for example. Q QKD, yeah, one, one yeah, yeah yes, QKD. Okay. So that's... Uh, uh, one example where we exchange keys using the, the quantum quantum networks, which transfer quantum information, but more importantly, they they transfer entanglement between qubits. And the big big difference between classical and quantum networks is that with a classical network, you don't know if you've been hacked necessarily, but with a quantum network, as soon as somebody reads a qubit or breaks entanglement, then you'll know instantly. So then you know you're communication has been uh, has been broken and you can resend a different key or whatever so it's secure it's sort of more secure anyway but also secure in the sense that you know when it's not secure <laughs> so how, how is that going to be applied in the blockchain world then because uh, if I take the example of Bitcoin right and blockchain technology a, a lot of us are familiar that blockchain technology is the one that's running powering Bitcoin right and then of course you have the audit cryptography algorithms right uh, in in the um, in the blockchain uh, Bitcoin blockchain um, so of course there are people who say quantum computing computers will break some of these algorithms but how will it secure blockchain okay so uh, what I did was I, I created uh, three nodes on one quantum chip and connected them through entanglement so we can actually connect the nodes so this is a kind of far-reaching or far-future technology in that we need to have quantum computers and quantum networks and they have to be connected together. So uh, it's not going to happen tomorrow, probably, but it should happen in a few years' time. In fact, when we reach that point, we'll then have the quantum internet, which is also talked about. But going back to blockchain, so first of all, the communication between the nodes uh, can be more secure. But also, because we're using entanglement, we can also increase the speed. And entanglement can actually be done across nodes as well. You can have multiple qubits entangled. So that means the consensus can be faster. We can have more nodes. Quantum scales up very nicely with a, a two to the power of the number of nodes. So we can have more nodes, more information. In fact, I can see that we can actually start having big data in our blockchains at the moment. You don't want to put anything big in your blockchain. Right. Yeah. Videos you keep outside. Maybe you have a hash stored on the blockchain to uniquely identify your media, but you, you don't load up your blockchains with big data. But with quantum, we could, we can, we could, well, we can, but we will be able to. Uh, yeah. We could do that. So then maybe have consensus at a big data scale rather than at the moment we have consensus of you know a few K megabytes at the most. So that's another area where quantum can also improve uh, the blockchain uh, capabilities. Uh, so, yep, speed, security, and size could all be improved by that.
Well, there are some people who say that, okay, right, we, we achieve sort of speed ups in terms of consensus, but that also uh, provide the hackers the same advantage as well. They achieve uh, speed ups in terms of breaking the consensus, right? So, you know, um, so there's a, I guess, it's introducing a new dilemma. Well, it's, it's introducing a new, a new, a new uh, information state. And so the good thing about quantum state is that if, if a hacker does read it, you know it's been read. Mm. So yes, we still have to be careful to make it as secure as possible so people can't read it. Mm -hmm. But if it is read, then you'll know straight away and uh, you know, do something about it. So mm. that all has to uh, all has to be much, much more mature than it is now. But I think the potential there is is uh, is still to be more more secure, even on on a bigger scale. So yes, yeah, uh, when we talk about Bitcoin, for example, we are talking about you know. Uh, what, less than 10 transactions per second, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. just on the classical network itself, it's very yeah. slow. Yeah. So yeah. if we bring in quantum, you're saying that the potential of processing more transactions will be, it's going to be, yeah. be higher, yeah. So, because, so yeah, I mean, uh, well, the, the, the main thing about it is, say, transaction speed. So Bitcoin is, is, is uh, kind of very slow, if you like. Uh, whereas uh, the, the, even now, uh, classically, there are consensus mechanisms which can do thousands of transactions per second. So it's, it's really the consensus is the heart of the blockchain. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I like about Bitcoin and proof of work is that it's been around now for 10 years. That's right, yeah. You know, it's, it's never been broken in a, you know, sort of a, a big way. Right. Lots of things around blockchain have, have been hacked. The exchanges, all That's the kind right. of centralized things around it, but mm -hmm. the actual core of, of mm -hmm. blockchain. And I did hear about one hack, which, which didn't, you know, wasn't very big, didn't work, work that well, but I think generally, uh, proof of work has, just, has shown itself. Then, we've, but it's also, as we know, very heavy on electricity as That's well. Right, so it's yeah. not very green. So when we look towards towards quantum consensus mechanisms, uh, hopefully they can be faster and bigger. And we but we also have to be very careful to make sure that they they maintain the security and can't, mm. can't be attacked or, or broken in the, in the same way that proof of work has proven itself. I have one more question, but okay. I don't think we have the time. But maybe okay. for the next time. Right. Uh, <laughs> You know, for, for thought, yeah, combining yeah. AI with blockchain with quantum, that will be even more explosive and exciting. Well, yeah, I mean, I'd actually take it another stage further and say what, what, what I see at the end point, and I'm glad you said about AI as well. My, my thoughts at the end point is that we have quantum sensors, which are quite already in, in use commercially. Mm -hmm. We have quantum networks transferring that quantum information to quantum computers doing quantum processing. And then all we see is the end result of this whole kind of quantum That's systems. Right. Yep. And of course, if you add in the mix AI as well, and one of the projects I've, I've just uh, finished last year was on uh, quantum neural networks. Mm. And we use qubits as your artificial neurons. And we found that we can train these, these Q, Q quantum neural networks 10 times faster than classical. Uh, so, and of course, the, the size is also possible to grow as well. So. 20 years, 30 years. It, Plus supercomputers and high performance yeah, computers yeah, and all, yeah, you know. Yeah, it'll, it'll, right. it's a different world again. Yeah, yeah. exciting, yes, <laughs> exciting. Yeah. yeah. So maybe I uh, yeah. chat with you in five years' time and sure. see where we are yeah, with uh, all, all these uh, exciting yeah, technologies. Yeah, yeah, see what yeah. else has come up as well. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, Paul, for okay. your time today. Thank you, Professor. Okay, thanks. Good to speak to you, yeah. Thank you. Thank you.